Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video three of our animation series. So last time we actually created our animation and we looked at the motion of our part. So if we drag this around, you can see that the motion is great. The arm goes down, it grabs our part, picks it up, drags it along, and drops it into the end spot. So what we want to do now is we want to modify the path because we have an issue where it actually drags it through our part here. So we're going to modify our path, relook at the animation, and then do kind of a quick wrap up. So I'm going to go back to my model, back to my 3D sketch, and I'm going to edit the 3D sketch. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that after it leaves this point that we right click, we insert a spline point, and that we make sure that we can have enough clearance. So I'm going to drag the spline point up to make sure that it picks this part up and drags it along and over. So we can OK this. And let's go ahead and go back into our motion study. And let's just recalculate this. And then we'll manually drag the timeline to see if the motion meets our new criteria. So that's one of the great things about using this 3D sketch and just a single spline in this case is we're able to easily create this motion and go back and modify it. So if we go back to our timeline and we just drag along, you can see it still goes down, still picks up our part, and it'll clamp it, drag along, and then it picks it up. And you can see now if we zoom in, we just barely clear our part, goes up and over, and over to the section where we need to drop it, drops it in place. Now obviously we had a little issues with the spline because I didn't know the entire length of this, but that's actually another great feature inside SOLIDWORKS 2014 is you can go into your 3D sketch and we can drive the spline by giving it a dimension. So you can see in this case 18.639. So if I say 18.5, now I've given the spline a complete dimension. I can go back into my motion study and at that last point, where we change the distance here, we go to our path, edit dimension, and we can say 18.5. And it goes all the way to the end. And that way it updates everything else because now at this point it goes to the end, and then when it lets go, you can see it drops. But of course, we already did this, so it's actually bringing our key point back. So we need to scroll up to our motion and modify that as well. But you can see that it's it's pretty quick and it's easy to create this motion and to change it. So one thing I want to do now is create a new motion study real quick and just talk about that other option where we have the mates and we simply use the mates. So if we drag this again out to four seconds, we create a key point out at four seconds, and go in here, if we simply go into our plug concentric mate, unsuppress that, and we go into our plug coincident mate and unsuppress that, you can see even though we know it can make this motion, it's locking up. So let's suppress our path mate and look at our motion. So if we calculate this, what happens is we go for four seconds and then at that four second spot, it simply snaps into place. So if we drag this around, it simply snaps into place. Now obviously that's not the right motion. The robot's not gonna be that fast. So this method, while it's very precise in getting the location down, it's very cumbersome because you don't get that nice smooth motion that we got with the other motion study using our path mate. So if you have to deal with this kind of assembly motion, you really want to make sure you understand the problem, you understand the motion of your parts, and then see if this kind of path mate and this kind of assembly motion will work for you. Now, the more complicated your assemblies, the more mates that you're going to have to have in place that control that motion. So in the end, you really need to get a good overall view of the project and understand where the mates need to be in place and what kind of freedom it does actually need. In most cases, from what I've seen, especially with these pick and place type, type robots, simple commands for moving the parts or more complicated motions such as this where it's more organic, a single spline or multiple splines, multiple entities for path mates work great. And remember, the path mate is just like any of these other mates. You can suppress and unsuppress it at any time. So if you have multiple paths that you need to follow, for instance, this nice organic sweep, drop that part, and then it needs to come up and grab something and you know go to another location, you can create these multiple path mates. And a good thing with these 3D sketches is the next one you create, you can start at this point 
and you can simply go straight up and over or you know however you need to so they're very flexible they're very easy to use and very robust because you have good control over modifying them and you get these nice organic shapes so that is creating an animation of a very complicated assembly you know multiple degrees of freedom robot with very little input actually just creating that spline is really the main thing that we had to do once our assembly mates were all defined so as always if you guys have any questions please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time